Welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke. Today we're going to build BI Publish reports through People Code. All BI Publish reports in PeopleSoft are delivered through People Code no matter where you see them. All of the API objects are well documented in People Books. So go there to find the classes, the objects, the methods, and the properties that you can take advantage of to deliver the best solution to your users. Today, we're going to show you two ways to invoke BI Publisher reports inside the application. One is online through a push button, and the second is through batch through an app engine scheduled by the user. Jump to a specific demo with the timing shown here. These timings will also be in the description below. Today's demonstration is specifically about using people code APIs to invoke BI Publisher reports. Creating data sets, creating BI Publisher templates using an RTF, an Excel, or another format, and creating the report definitions and data definitions are not in scope for this demonstration. We're assuming that you already know how to do that. For more information on that, see some of our other videos on those specific subjects. The premise for today's demonstration is a training report by location. First, we'll show you that report on the page from a push button where the user selects the location, pushes the button, and receives report and a new tab. Then we're going to show you that exact same report running from batch in an app engine, publishing that report to the report manager. At design time, we need to decide whether a report should be available to the user online or through a batch report. Some of the things we need to consider. Is the report needed ad hoc? Or is it regularly scheduled? The size of the report and the impact to the system. Remember, if you're online, the report is running from the app server, not the report server, and that could affect online performance for that and many other users. Smaller reports needed only at the user's choosing may be better available on the page from a push button. Larger reports may be better run from the process schedule since they won't impact the user's online performance at that time, nor the resources nor be limited by the user's session timeout period. As always, all the objects and code shown here is available on peopletoolstechtips.com. Let's start with a walkthrough of the solution we're going to build. Let's navigate to our component. I need a run control page for the app engine. This component contains both our BI publisher invoking examples. The sample page has fields for the set ID and location. The values selected by the user will be passed to both versions of our BI Publisher training report. The button will immediately invoke the report, sending it to the new browser tab. The Run button is the standard PeopleTools process schedule request. Both these examples will render the same BI Publisher report with the same data. Clicking on the button invokes the report, and we see it in the new tab. Back to the Run Control page. Click the Run button to bring up the process schedule request page and queue a report app engine to the process scheduler. Monitor the process through the process monitor. When we see our process has completed successfully, return back to the run control page and access the report manager. Here's our report. Returning the identical report to the online version as the push button. Let's start looking through our objects and code. Here's our page containing the input fields and push button. The input run control fields are from the X run control BI pub record, and the push button is from the X BI pub work record. Let's add the people code to the push button. Remember, this is a field change event. Start by documenting our customizations. Next, we import our app packages, which generate the data, create an XML file, and invoke the BI publisher report. This instantiates the delivered BI pub report manager. I'm calling my object an OXML under pub. Instantiate the XML generator that will convert the data in our row set to an XML string. Get the run control record from the component. This record has the parameters for the report. The record is in the level zero of the buffer on the component. Create the variables we'll use, our file object, the row set object to receive the data, report definition, and we'll need the fully qualified URL to the file to hand it off to the BI Publisher object. Set our report definition. This is from the BI Pub report definition configuration page. We'll see a little bit more of this later. The report definition must be created before our code will work. We instantiate our object to load the data for the report. This line loads the data into our road set given the location parameters passed. 
The result of this is a complex parent-child row set. The parent row is employee data containing header information about the employee with the training. The child row set is one or more training records containing the training classes and dates that employee attended. Again, generating the XML file is out of the scope of this video. See our videos posted on the channel about creating XML files using row set, file layout, and XML doc methods. Now let's create our XML file using row set. Create the XML generator. This is a delivered app package. Our XML string equals the generator object, which we passed the row set object as a parameter. To the get XML data object method, now we'll instantiate our file object. Remember to always use UTF-8 as a character encoding. You will get into trouble if you write XML to an ASCII encoded file. Write our XML string to the file using the file objects write line method. Before closing, get the fully qualified URL to the file. We'll need this later when we tell the BI Publisher object where the source data is located. We capture that with the file object's name property, which returns a fully qualified URL to that file. And now close the file. At this point, we have our XML file on the server accessible by this code event. Now we create the report. Instantiate our BI Publisher report object using the report ID we defined earlier. Then do a get. Now we have our report definition loaded into the BI Publisher object. Next step, tell the BI Publisher where the XML file data source is located. The method set runtime data XML file tells the report object to use the XML file as the data source and its location. Remember, this requires a fully qualified file URL. Process the report. For our report, we only need the date field. Commit work to clear think time functions. Last step, display the output using the object's display output method. Let's test this so far. And there is the report we just generated. Let's look at some of our objects. Let's see our XML file URL. This file should still be on the server. Here's our fully qualified URL to the XML data file. Next, let's see where the actual BI Publisher PDF report was placed on the servers. The get dir separator function is a delivered function that works out whether the directory separator should be a forward or backslash depending on the server's operating system. Put the system find directory separator into a string. Our file name is the BI Publisher object ID property concatenated with its extension. The fully qualified URL to that report is the report object's out destination property, then the separator, then report inst. This is the subdirectory where the completed reports are placed. Then the file name we just created. Pop that out to the page in a message box. Here is a report location, which you can see on the server. I've report and path. Here is the same report. And that is all there is to invoking a BI Publisher report from a push button. We've talked a lot about the PSXP Report Defin Manager app package. This is well documented in people books. In the People Tools People Books, look in the People Code API reference book for the BI Publisher class section. Here's report defin class methods and properties. such as process report with an explanation of the parameters and also the properties. As you can see here, there are a lot of tools provided to you by PeopleSoft to deliver the BI Pouchel reports your users need. So come here to find and understand all the methods and properties and subclasses of the PeopleTools implementation of BI Publisher. Let's run the same report from the process scheduler in batch. During the solution walkthrough, we ran a process called BI Publisher, not an AMP engine or an SQR. A BI Publisher is nothing more than an app engine with a different process type. So here's our BI Publisher process. It's an app engine. It's very simple. First, get the run control parameters just like any other app engine to get the user's parameter selections to process. 
the do when runs a SQL and loads our state record with the page data. Here is our state record. Here is getting the set ID and location into the state record. For our operator and run control ID, very standard app engine processing. Now let's build our report. This is going to be essentially the same as the online push button code with a few extras since it's an app engine running in batch. Most of the extras are pretty much boilerplate code. Document our customization, import our load test data app package, import our XML generator app package, import our report def and manager app package, assign variables to our objects. Just to keep this as similar to the push button process as possible, we get our run control record and declare our other variables we'll need. Our file and row set. Our report definition came from the run control SQL. It's hard coded on the select, going to this field on our state record. Back to our code. Because it's an app engine running on the report server, we're going to get the session message should there be a problem. Here we are getting our run control record with our input parameters. Operator ID, run control ID, select by key. We also could have gotten these from our state record we loaded into the do when statement. Instantiate our load test data object, then load our report data into our row set with the location as a parameter. At this point, the row set has all the data we need for the report. Take that row set and create an XML string with our delivered XML gen object. Instantiate the object. Get the XML string by passing the generator object, the row set, in the getXMLData method. Let's put that data into a file. Instantiate the file object, remember, UTF-8. Then write the data to the file. Before closing, get the fully qualified URL from the file object name property. Then we close our file. At this point, we have our XML file on the server with all the data we need and a URL to that file. Let's now create a report. We start with some of our error messaging for debugging issues. Most of this is just boilerplate that can be copied from other delivered BI Publisher app engines. Result equals true, no problem so far. We'll put this into a try catch to attempt to avoid crashing on errors. Get our report definition ID for easier coding. Instantiate our BI Publisher object and get. Now we have the report loaded into the BI Pub object. Now let's give the report object the data from our XML file we just created. More boilerplate. Set the report object debugging to false. More boilerplate again about bursting. We're not bursting in our example out of this scope. More boilerplate if the out destination from the run control is a file. This is passing the information to the report generator, where to put that file. Here's something different from the push button. We need to put the process instance in the report object so it can correctly place the results in the report manager. After all that, processed report. Now we have to publish the report as per the user's run control directions. This is more boilerplate. Web, printer, email. Just give the report object a process instance and it will take all the info from the run control page. Now to complete the try catch with a catch. If report exists, close it down. Write the error to the log. Send the error to the message log. If there was a problem, close down the report object if it hadn't been closed already. Send any message to our log. Send any session messages to our log. If session messages count as greater than zero, send all the messages to an array. Loop through the array and write the messages to our log. Save and see our results. Run the process. Go to the report manager. Here is our report. And here is our PDF. Our log file. Our trace log. Here's our BI Publisher report being generated. Here are the file locations for the report and XML files. 
Before we leave, I want to review the BI Publisher report configuration in our system. Here is the process name. Let's see how that is set up. Process Scheduler, Processes. We see it's listed as an XML Publisher type, but it's an app engine. You have to provide the process category and just link it to your Run Control component here. Don't forget your process groups. Looking at the BI Publisher report definition, first, we have our data source configuration. It's an XML file, our sample file. Now moving on to our BI Publisher report definition. All standard type data, our template, control your output, properties, people tool settings, Ensure the use default out destination equals true so people code can access the location of the report. We've invoked a BI Publisher report through an online push button with people code. We've also invoked a BI Publisher report on the process code with an app engine. We've pushed the resulting report to a new browser tab and also the report manager, and we showed you paths for email and other options. Thanks for watching like and comment below, and please consider subscribing to our channel. And we'll see you here next time on People Tools Tech Tips.